All right, hey guys, it's Nate, guys and gals. Uh, this is the first training session in the online training videos for the Accommodate No One module, the Accommodate No One Without Choosing module. And so you've, you've seen the Accommodate No One coaching session. We've all been on that together. And you've had a chance to get that feeling of confusion and overwhelm and you, you know, looking at how your life breaks down into these little parts. And it's like, well, how could I possibly change every part of my life? I mean, that's why we start this way. I want you to have that feeling that says, I'm frustrated, I'm overwhelmed, I'm confused. Because frustration means you're going to have a breakthrough. And confusion means you're going to learn. And overwhelm means you're going to focus. And the best way to focus is to get started taking the ideas that you have and keeping it simple. Taking action on something right away. And so this first workshop that I'm going to show you, as a matter of fact, you're looking at a copy of this right now, I'm just going to walk you through it and tell you exactly how simple it is to start using the Accommodate No One formula and the Excuse Removal Blueprint. Now remember, Accommodate No One really is about looking at the starting points, the in-betweens, and then the achievement moments of your life and deciding are you are you taking action without choosing your ideal life or business at any point in your life? This workshop is going to give you the ability, and you have it right there in front of you so you can take a peek at it as well. You're going to be able to look at how awareness and vision and active choice brought together create your ideal life, the life of your choosing. So here's the workshop. Rule number one, before we finish the call, you remember I told everyone I know you're overwhelmed Relax. Take a deep breath. Take some time to trust in the process. Don't accommodate your experience that says change is going to be hard. <laughs> it's, that's accommodating without choosing. You don't want things to feel hard. I'm here to tell you they're not. They're easy. We're going to make changes one area at a time. And you're going to practice doing that. And 90 days from now, you'll have made dozens and dozens of changes in your life, but you'll have done it one at a time. And you're going to learn this process, and you're going to learn how to use the excuse removal blueprint, and you're going to get that feeling where you become conscious of the decisions that you make. So this workshop's about managing your in-betweens, right? That's really what it's all about. It's that you, you're now in between. You kicked it off and you started working on this, this online coaching program with me. Now you're in the middle of it and you're taking the steps. Let's enjoy it. First of all, celebrate the fact if you did the homework from the, from the coaching session and you've started noticing what you're noticing, noticing what people say to you, noticing what your patterns are, noticing outside influences, the evolution is, is, is happening. You're moving from that caterpillar where this is the way you've always done things to the butterfly where something more exciting and adventurous, where, where this genius inside of you is starting to be born. This beautiful part of your life is starting to be born. So let me take you through the workshop really quick, give you some ideas, show you how my wheels turn in this way. I'll give you some practical examples and then you need to commit to not just be inspired and excited about what I share with you in this video and in the workshop, but to dive in and do something about it between now and our next session. Most of you have, if you're following through it at the, the average pace, you have at least a week to go and get this done, but don't wait until tomorrow to start. Start the second that I'm done and participate actively while I'm taking you through this. I'm going through this for you. I've been through it, so, and I go through it all the time. So I want you to go through it now. Go through it with me and take action. So rule number one is that it's easy. And then we're gonna ta I'm going to take you through three steps, okay? The idea that this is easy and all you have to do is three, follow three steps means take it one step at a time. I'm going to tell you step one. Listen to step one. Don't hurry up and look on to step three and try to figure out how the two relate. Don't find out how quickly you can get this done. Look at step one. Be completely present with step one. And here it is, okay? Become familiar with your formula by choosing one area of your life that you'd like to transform into your ideal. So think about one area of your life that you'd like to transform. Would you like to improve your health? Would you like to improve your career, your finances? Or maybe it's not about that. Maybe you'd like to improve the way that you start your day. Maybe you'd like to improve how you feel when interacting with your boss or when you're interacting with your employees. 
or maybe you'd like to, to feel better just on a regular basis, more energized and excited about your life because you're creating your ideal life. Whatever that is for you, just get clear on that right now. And the thing is, there's no wrong answer. Anyone who really is about creating their ideal life and accommodating no one, who's really going to share their gifts, is going to be looking at every area of their life and making constant improvement, never-ending improvement, all the time. So just pick one. Whatever your answer is, it's right. And we're going to take you through the workshop using that one answer now. All right. Now step two, do the exercises to activate your ideal in the three elements of the formula. So you want to raise your awareness, improve your vision, and then choose and take action. Now one of the ways that we're going to do this is I'm going to take you through the excuse removal blueprint with your example. I'm going to take you right through it. I'm going to fill out some of the answers myself. We'll talk about it. And then you'll be able to have some, some reference points so you can see in, in real world how I did it or how someone else might have done it so then you can take action and do it yourself. And then step three is put your outside and internal influences on notice. You want to let them know that you're becoming this new version of you. And the good thing is your internal you, okay, this, let's call this part of you, this you 1.0. There's lots of part of, uh, there's lots of parts of you, this, this 1.0, that don't want to go away. You know, the caterpillar does not like the idea of the toxins that the butterfly mechanism pours into the caterpillar to get rid of the caterpillar. There's a part of you that wants to live that old story and continue to be this this caterpillar, this version of, of you that's 1.0, and it's going to be up to you to put your 1.0 self on notice and act out, live as if. Whatever you follow I am with from now on needs to be what you version 2.0 would say. That includes how you interact with the world around you. So just practice that. If you hear yourself, notice what you're noticing. If you hear yourself saying something, think to yourself, be present in that moment. Is that me, the I am version 2.0 saying that? Or is that version 1.0 that just doesn't want to go away yet? And as long as you become, every time you become conscious of that, every time you notice it, you grow. You become closer to the new version. So just be that best version of yourself, okay? So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to look at what will your life look like when you make these changes and then you're going to go in your mind as if all the changes are already real. So some people might call it suspending reality, but what I'm going to suggest is make it your reality. Believe it and know it. Go to this place inside that says that's who I am. Practice sensing it with all your senses. Let me tell you how this works, okay? So. Awareness plus vision plus active choice equals the ideal life of your choosing. Let's look at awareness. Awareness just means using all of your senses. There's six senses. You have your sight. So you have to look at how you look at the world around you. You need to look at the world as you version 2.0, this new version of you. You're not going to accommodate a life, a belief system, a career move, a trip to work, anything that you're not choosing. So you have to decide what will you start seeing and then put yourself there where you see it. Practice what you see. Same thing applies. What you hear. Practice what you taste. What you touch. What you smell. And now the sixth sense is knowing. Let me give you an example of a knowing. If if you're the kind of person who wants to change the way you influence your business because you just want a business that's going to thrive and be successful, if you're you version 2.0, what would you know about yourself? Who would you have to become? Who would you know that you are if you were thriving in a successful business? How would you show up to meetings? How would you dress? What would you say? How productive or focused would the meeting be? Where would your clarity come from? Would you be prepared? Would you be on time? Or would you just get through the meeting? Would you just get to your day to get through your day? Because that's how most version 1.0 people live their life. So knowing says, I know who I am, 
and you look around you and see if the evidence is lining up. Start to look at the evidence around you. Use all of your senses to see what you version 2.0 would see. And if you don't see what you version 2.0 would expect to see around him or her, then change it. Start to nip it and tuck it and tip it and move it around. Change where you drive. Change how you get in the car, how you feel, what you listen to. What would you, you version 2.0 listen to? At any moment, just stop and say, how do I feel? Do I feel outstanding, adventurous, exciting? If I don't, how could I? Do I feel rushed? Am I heading off to a meeting? Suddenly I've got this meeting that I have to go to and I'm just in a hurry and I always feel rushed and I've got to be there in 15 minutes. Would you version 2.0 allow that? Would you accommodate feeling rushed in your life? You have to ask yourself, if you version 2.0 wouldn't feel that, what will you change right now so you don't have to feel that way right now? Change the evidence. One thing I did when I started to become my you version 2.0, and I've done that many times, over and over again through this cycle, I would be on my way to a meeting and I was someone who was always rushed. Some of the people around me would say, oh, he loves that. He loves being seated in the pants last minute. And you know what? I respond really well in last minute circumstances. But the truth is, it's not a comfortable place to be on a regular basis. Not being prepared and not being on time does not feel good. So what I did, as you version 2.0, at one point when I finally made the decision to burn the boats and take the island and become the new version of myself, I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick up the phone. Hey, how's it going? I know I need, I'm, I'm, I needed, I'm needed at this meeting. I know I'm supposed to be there. I'm feeling so rushed right now. Honestly, I didn't give myself enough time to prepare. I want to bring you the best presentation I can. And if it's okay with you, I'm not going to be there today. But I'd like to pick a better time so I can, I can come completely prepared. Now, that's not an excuse, is it? It's a real reason that I wasn't able to be there. I wasn't going to be rushed, but more than that, I put the people who I was going to meet with on notice that I intend to be prepared moving forward. And I committed to myself I would only have to say that to that person one time. And then I showed up when it was time to have that meeting prepared. But on the day when I was supposed to be there, when I made the call, I went and just I, I pulled over and I thought, what would I do right now as you version 2.0? as the I am who I am becoming, what would the evidence, this effortless evidence in real time be? And I thought, well, what is the result that I want? What is the result that I want? And why do I want it? Well, I want to, in this case, I wanted to build a fantastic new lead development system for this company. And then, how am I going to get it? Well, I know I have a good process for that, but I need to go think it through. So I went down to a cafe. And I said, the best thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to go sit at my desk and check email every five or six minutes. And then I said, OK, I'm going to get to the cafe, and then I'm going to write down a process. What exactly will the outcome be? It'll be a process I believe in, that I know has worked, that I can share with confidence. And then, uh, so I'll have a plan. That'll be the outcome. What action am I committed to taking? It's the woe system. I'm going to be, as 2.0, I'm going to use woe in my life. If I want a result, and in this case I'm going to be productive and helpful at a meeting, it wasn't just a pitch, it was meeting with a client who's looking for a certain result. I'm going to give the respect to myself and to them to be massively prepared and productive. I'm going to woe my life. I'm going to pull up on the reins, I'm going to stop, and I'm going to get massively productive. What do I want? What do I want? it? How am I going to get there? What's the outcome? What would I measure? How would I know that it's true? And what action am I committed to taking? And that's what I would do. So you, you get to this place where you become massively aware and you stop yourself and you notice what you're noticing. All right. Now the next step in this, the next step in this, this formula is vision. So you start to look at what would the ideal look like if it was here? You know what? I'd be prepared on a regular basis. I feel super energetic and healthy. And I went down all areas of my life and then the different parts of my day and the different relationships I have. And I thought, what would the ideal look like? But you don't have to think of all of those today. Just think of one and then make an active choice. An active choice means the U version 2.0 version is the ideal version. You've got to raise your standards. You have to say, let me give you an example of, 
of having this active choice. My vision for meetings is I am totally prepared. Or if we're going to step back to maybe your goal is to have a thriving business, my, my standard is my business thrives. I do the things that make a business create tremendous value for the people running it, the people investing in the products and services that it sells, and making them available in a way where it's so valuable that people can't help but try to do business with us. That's what you version 2.0 is committed to. And whatever version I'm doing right now, I'm going to raise my standards. I'm going to find out how to model the very best of whatever that is. I'm going to talk to the right people. I'm going to go to the right events. I'm going to surround myself with people who have verifiable, proven, and committed results in their business. And I'm going to find out how to do it. One of the reasons that you have a coach in me, because I've been through this process, especially if you're looking for business and life growth, I'm going to be able to share examples from my life, specifically how I've done it. So active choice says you're going to create an action plan and you're going to schedule it. So now let's create some evidence. I want to go through, I want to go through the uh, excuse removal blueprint with you right now with one example. Let's just bomb right through it with one example. And then I want you to, after I've gone through this example, I want you to go through the blueprint and fill it out yourself. And get, see this is a tool, a life change tool. You're going to want to use this. Eventually you're going to just own it up here. You're not even going to have to look at it anymore. You're going to see part of your life. You're going to say, what is the evidence? What would the ideal evidence be if this came true? So what would, as version 2.0 of me, what would the world look like around me? What would I be driving? What would I be wearing? What would my income be? Who would I serve? Where would I live? What would my morning be like? You get the idea? You can make a list like this very easy, easily. What are the excuses or reasons keeping me from it? What, who would I have to become? I, the identity shift. Who would I have to become to create this ideal? You version 2.0 is ready to become that. So let's practice getting a good picture about who you point to, uh, U2.0 is. The thing is, if you don't take the time to define your U version 2.0, how are you ever going to become it? Let me give you an example, okay? Here's you. Here's the you that you want, right? This is how most people think. It's very linear. I'm going to become, I'm going to go get my version 2.0. And then when I have it, I'm going to be happier. I'm going to be more fulfilled. I'm going to have a better business, a better life. Let me tell you why this doesn't work. In this space in here, there's an illusion of distance. There's this illusion that says, I am missing version 2.0. You're not missing it. You version 2.0 is already here. Do you see caterpillars climbing out of the cocoon and running over to another cocoon to get the butterfly version of themselves and then kind of putting the deal together? All right, standing over there on the side of the branch saying, you know, if, if I'll give you a couple of these leaves, you give me a wing. That's not how it works. You, you go to the place where you know if you want to become version 2.0, you don't have to see it. You don't ever have to see it as separate from you. So let's use this version from now on. This is you. This is you version 2.0. You got this you inside of you. This is 1.0. And then you have 2.0. And 2.0 is going to swallow up version 1.0 because it's bigger, it's stronger, it is a bad man. All right? Or one. It gets it. It knows it. It has the answers and it knows how to be resourceful and how to find them. So now let's look at what, what the changes you want in your life. Not by becoming version 2.0, but by making this internal identity shift in real time where you are today. So next time we have a coaching session, and even as you go through the rest of these trainings, you're becoming that from inside. Therefore, guess what? How long do you have to wait? There's no waiting. Becoming is instant. All you have to do to become 2.0 is get clear about the shift you have to make and decide that you've made it. Burn the boats, take the island. Cut yourself off from any other option. Then you schedule the action and that date, that moment that you're creating that, those steps to create that outcome, create that evidence, you are real. You are version 2.0. You may not get it perfect, but guess what? U version 2.0 is always improving.
There is no version 1.0 anymore. Now, if you hear version 1.0 or sounds that sound like it, create the same kind of distance in your mind that you used to have for version 2.0 and just say, oh, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I've heard that before. But that's not who I am anymore. I'm the very best version of myself. Put on your cape. All right? So let's go through this blueprint right now. Let's say that you've got a thriving business or you've got a business and it was thriving and it's not and you'd like to have it be thriving. Whatever your circumstances are, you'd like to be better in your business and have just a more successful business but you'd like to be removed from that business so you don't have to be there or maybe you can't be there all the time. So how do you apply the excuse removal blueprint to that situation? Well, let's look at one step at a time. The first step, actually let me step over here. The first step is you look at what's the area of your life where you're going to say, okay, I want to have career success and business fulfillment. I want to have a thriving career success and business fulfillment. There we go. That's the area of your life that we're going to work on right now. And now we're going to look at what is the top evidence or vision of your ideal. What would you version 2.0 see in your business if that was the case? Okay, let's see. Well, what would you see? What would it look like? I bet you'd have a meticulously clean business. So it would be clean. It would be organized. It would be professional. It would be prepared. It would be profitable. Right? We could keep going down that list. Keep going down that list. What would it look like? What, what would you be aware of? What would it look like? You would, would you see, um, would you have a different building? Would you be in a different location? Would you have inside staff or outside staff? Would you have some virtual team members? Would you have uh, an organizational strategy where you know exactly what you're setting out to accomplish and why you want it? Now remember what we started on when we, when we first started this conversation. We said, what do you want? Well, what you want needs evidence. How do you know it's coming true? Why do you want it? What's the outcome? What action are you committed to taking? This evidence comes from becoming aware. What would the sounds be? When you're in your office, do you start to hear things in your business or where you work that sound like a successful business? Are clients saying things that show that they're satisfied and that they're happy? What would they change to? Go right down the list. How would communication be in your business? How would leadership be? How about management? How about tactical and technical staff? How about the branding and the marketing of your business? How about the legal structure of your business and the way you make and keep promises and protect yourself? What would that look like if your business was structured? Let's call this evidence your ideal business experience. Now I'm going to later on in one of the future, future modules we're going to go through the rapid business, business growth process and part of that process is the ideal business experience process. I'm going to take you step by step through how to create that experience but I'm, I can give you a template and I can take you through the process but you know what isn't working right because you wouldn't say I want to have a better career in business if you didn't know what needed to improve. You have to take a look at that and you have to raise your awareness. Get a better vision for the future by looking at how things are and how you'd like them to be. And just so as you create this evidence, you just make a total list. Think of every area of a business. Now I'll be able to show you later on that there's nine business focus centers and you'll be able to look at each center and say, well this is what you should see. This is what you should hear. This is what you should know. You know what's interesting? In my business I have more of a knowing about what I, what's going on and what's succeeding and what isn't by not being there than I ever had by being there. You're probably wondering, how did I create that? So think about, you want a career and a business that's thriving. Where would the money, where would the bank accounts be? What would your credit lines look like? How many clients would you have? Where would they be from? What kind of products and services would they be buying from you? How would you spend your day at work? What projects would you be working on? You make a list. You, you version 2.0 knows what it wants, so pretend the genie came down and take the time to define it. Just take the time. All you have to do is say, I am. I am the kind of person who is becoming the person who has the evidence that I'm outlining right here that is my ideal in my ideal business experience. Now, if you have limitations that keep you from being able to be in your business or you want to be able to be remote from your business, I've been through that. I had 22 full-time employees 
and loads of contractors that were always in my office. And when I got into a transition in my business that you, you may or may not know the story, I had to find a way to work remotely and work with virtual team members so I could not only work with the best in the world, but I, I could have access to people to do the work without having to have them in the office. Some people are in my office, but some people aren't. And I have a reason for it. Because my ideal says I can focus on my writing, focus on my speaking, focus on my training, and be able to coach a team and hold them accountable based on technology and systems where they have the ability to live their life remotely where they want to be. Because I firmly believe people are far more productive and successful when they're creating a life that they want. Usually that's location independent. We can talk more about how that works at some other point. But get creative. Would you be at work all the time? Would you only be there on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday? Would you be there six hours a week or 60? Would you feel free or would you feel trapped? Get into it. Get into what it looks like if it's your ideal. Then you're going to move to the next category. Okay? And you're going to maybe at this point, because we picked a pretty big example, let's think of your excuse. Well, let's pick one excuse. I need to work remotely, but... As a matter of fact, I have a situation either because of health or limitations in geography or a family situation where I need to be at home. So, but I'm unable to make my business successful because I'm really good with being there in person with my clients. Well, why is that true? Write down all your excuses and reasons why you're not able to make your business successful. As a matter of fact, I would say let's not contemplate the risks of not flying. Let's not contemplate the risks of, uh, I call it the staying on the groundness of things. Let's look at what it would look like if you could fly and come up with uh, 20 reasons for your top three reasons why your business isn't thriving. Come up with 20 reasons why it can thrive. And, and, and put it in, the, in this standpoint. What you're going to do is say, I'm working remotely and my business isn't thriving because, and write your answer, and say, here's 20 reasons. So let me say one reason, okay? Here's one reason. Um, I'm, I'm remote. There's one reason. Because I'm remote, my business can't thrive. Well, I have an interesting example for you. What are 20 ways why being remote could make my business thrive more? That's interesting. Let's, let's maybe in this exercise, let's pick this one example, by the way, you want to go through your top five or six right away because we're going to make a big transition this week. So if this is your transition, take the time. Come up with five excuses. Get your biggest, juiciest excuses. Write them all down and then pick your top five. The one we're going to do is working remote is costing me the success of my business. I, I need to be there to make it successful. So write down working remote and then write down 20 reasons why working remote in your business is the linchpin for making it successful. Because you know, if you stayed working in your business, you might have relied on hallway conversations. And by, okay, so there's item one. Hallway conversations. I have hallway conversations and I expect to create progress. That's the way I interact with the team. It's also how I interact with my clients. Okay, so I'm going to be able to, by working remotely, organize productive meeting time and communication time. I'm going to have massively effective and scheduled communication because it's going to be done remotely. I can't just grab someone in the hallway. I have to make sure they're available. So I'm going to create an awesome ability to communicate what I need to know and what they need to know from me. I'm going to become a master communicator. So there's one. The other is, okay, uh, working remotely, I get to start thinking about how much more thorough can I be in educating my team if they can't rely on me for answers all the time? So I'm going to become really good at sharing my insights and education. Now, another thing is, a lot of people in my business rely heavily upon saying value, quality, price, and uh, the market I'm in is really causing, I think, um, it's causing a decline in, in the perception of value in what we do. So um, I'm in the, uh, say I'm in the legal field. People can go get legal advice online for a hundred bucks. They can go to LegalZoom, they can go anywhere else, and they can get, so they, or they go to Google and they research it, or they go to wikis, Wikipedia. So they come in, because I'm remote, I'm gonna be able to create excellent educational material where people can ask questions and even go to webinars where I can answer some of their big questions where otherwise I may not have thought through 
how to answer those questions because I was so busy being in the office. So I'm gonna, there's another way. I'm going to have awesome frequently asked question answers. Now I'm going to actually be able to build a webinar too without the distractions. I always had trouble focusing in the office. I was too accessible. So by being remote, I'm going to be less accessible, which means other people are going to perceive the value of me in my business more than they ever have. There, look at all the wins by being remote. How about this? They perceive me as more valuable by, because I'm remote. So what does that cause? Well, the more valuable I am, the more trust in the relationship they have. Because they know when I give them something valuable and I've taken the time to do it, they believe what I've told them has been given the thought and attention it deserves. So now, a lot of the team members thought by me being remote, it's part of the reason the business wasn't doing so well. But now, because of this value of my communication and all these other improvements, I can now share in a format with the team that they'll trust with excellent communication that the business is on, its, on the right track, I have this exciting vision, and I'm even mastering becoming an educator. We are going to thrive and grow. The more remote I am, the more success the business will have. I'm going to instill more confidence in the future of the business by taking control of giving more maximum value to people who may never work with us by thinking about that all the time, including how I communicate that to my team. So, there's one example. I've, got, I've gone through, I don't know, eight or ten different, maybe more, examples of why working remote could be hugely successful. But more than that, my business has a huge overhead. And the more exceptional I get at working remotely, the more creative ideas I'm going to have about improving my business. I'm going to have a different view of the world. I'm going to get more innovative. My business is going to change. And I may be able to reduce my overhead, change the way I run my business, and create perspective around the kind of processes I've used for the last 15 or 20 years so I can actually do things differently. I'm actually going to see things in a different way because I'm not even in this office looking at the same four walls and same people all the time. And when I actually do show up and I do walk into those walls, walk in, in those four walls and see those people, they're going to have this sense of, wow, she's in here. This is important time. And when we do connect, it's going to have more magic. That's just some of the examples. So that's what you want to do. When you, when you look at your excuses, write them down and then come up with 20 reasons why they're the best thing that could ever happen. If you don't think they're the best thing, so maybe one example, one excuse is the market is taking a huge decline. I'm going to tell you there's always at least 20 or more ways that that's good news. If you're in the healthcare market and you say, oh, all these new patients dropping into the market and a lack of perception and value in what we do, and everybody's undercutting the competition, say you're in medical, you get to go out there and say, okay, decline in the market. The great news is we're going to become something bigger. Instead of just a medical service for hire, we're going to become a medical service for a higher purpose. We'll put up so much value in what we're doing that instead of just serving the patient, we'll serve the community. We'll become experts in two or three things we never would have bothered to do if the market didn't challenge us and guide us with these challenges and problems. And we're going to become innovators. We're even going to find a way to make everything we do something that contributes to people who are in need. We never would have taken that time if we were comfortable the way things always were. So thank goodness for the upheaval in the healthcare market. Those are just some examples. Once you get there, you're going to say, okay, well working remotely, identity shift, who would I have to become, what would I have to believe, how would I have to behave if working remotely was awesome? Who would I become as you version 2.0? The I am. I've just come up with all the ideas and I'm just going to look at them. I'm someone who would do this. I'm someone who would do this. It requires planning. It requires thinking. It requires scheduling. You're going to create such an amazing set of opportunities. And you're going to say, I become someone who, okay, I see opportunity in getting organized and working remotely. I create really much better accountabilities. Who would you become? I would become so organized and prepared that just because I'm in an office with all my files, my desks, and my people, I'll have a better sense of knowing and comfort about how my operation runs because I'll know I don't have the luxury of cheating and just mentioning things in the hallway. I will find out the top five or six shifts in my identity. I just gave you some examples and I will start to practice those and become that person who thrives in a remote environment. And imagine the power of doing that. What if one of the biggest benefits by working remotely is you can get 10 times done, 10 times the work done you always did in half the time? Then the identity would be, I have someone who has time to build something new or spend more time with my family or have more adventures 
or show other people how to do the same thing. The next step is action. Okay, you've got all these different things that you're going to become and you've removed these excuses. You've even turned all your excuses into opportunities for change. You've even shifted your identity. Now you want to look at action. What is an action, one action you can take now to move this forward? An action comes in the form of reclarifying your results. You're going to say, what do I want? W, what do I want and why do I want it? How am I going to get there? What is the specific outcome of this action and what action am I committed to taking? What are the steps? Now when you look at actions, you th should think, when's it due? Who's accountable? What will it look like when it comes true? And what's so cool about that is you only need to take one action to become successful as someone who's remote. And the one action is make yourself remote and see what it feels like. I guarantee if you're not in your office and you're used to being there, there's going to be something you left there. Start to make a plan of what you would have to do if suddenly you couldn't be there. Then what would you do? And the last item, the date that you become that version of you who thrives on being remote, that's the date it becomes real. So all you have to do is go through this blueprint for each area. And you know, the truth is, even though you're going to come up with 20 different ways to eliminate these excuses and turn them into opportunities for action, opportunities to become the best version of you, version 2.0, you only need to make one commitment, one commitment to make this, this change. You only need to find one opportunity to make it real. And then become that person who does that. Decide. Take the action, schedule it, and then as you're doing it, see yourself as the person. I am the person who has this result. I am, right now. And start nipping, tucking, and putting the evidence in your way. That's just one example. I've given you a lot to think about. Just remember, as a recap, all you need to know here is, what's the area of life you're going to improve? What's the area of life you're going to improve? What's the evidence that you're going to, that you're going to create when it comes true? What's it going to look like? What are you going to see around you? What are the excuses that are keeping you from it? Well, the biggest excuse about working remotely is being remote. So go put yourself there. Tell your team, I'm going to be remote now. It's amazing how the evidence will change. You'll suddenly be buying a chair and fixing up a desk and organizing files and moving things and throwing things away. You'll be decluttering your life. As you do that, you'll be decluttering your mind because you've removed an excuse. You have room in there for other creative thoughts. You've given yourself space to breathe. Then you're going to make this massive identity shift. You're going to say, I am a person who thrives by being remote. I could even show others how to do it. The first thing I told them is, move yourself remotely and see what happens. Do it. Make the change. Move something around. Or even better, if you don't want to move out of your office and become remote, move into an office that you've never been in before and leave your stuff in the other office and tell everyone to leave you alone unless you call them or meet them online. I suggest becoming remote, but the truth is that works too. Be unavailable completely until you're off location completely. And then start to find out how you could do this at a cafe or in another state or in another country and find out how your schedule changes. We're just talking about moving a few things around. I'm throwing a lot of ideas at you, but simply you're just going to look at the area of your life you want to fix, the evidence that, that would come true if it was real, and then you're going to start removing excuses so you can become the person who takes the action and it is real. It becomes true today, this moment. Go through the exercises one, with one thing that you'd like to make real right now. Make it real right now. All right. I'll talk to you soon. This has been great. I hope you enjoyed the workshop, and I'll see you in the next one.